I presented last year, um, we weren't able to show the demonstration that Jeremiah wanted to do. There was some technical difficulties, and uh, uh, but over the last uh, several years, uh, Jeremiah and collaborating with uh, Paul Townley in the UK, um, they've been collaborating on the Tesla uh, turbine project for a while. They kind of have their own schools of thought on which way to go with it. Uh, luckily, uh, Paul in the UK told me about Jeremiah, and he's only several hours from Spokane, luckily. And so uh, last year, around March, Peter and I drove down to uh, uh, where, he, where he's at down in Idaho, and we saw the demo of the, the hot-cold system, the cryophorus method, which is kind of like a drinking bird with a turban in the neck. And that's essentially kind of what it is. And uh, it's actually absolutely profound. Um, he's making more progress um, with this system, and, you know, Paul has his own, uh, own path that he's following on it. Uh, than probably anybody since Tesla. Uh, you know, there's uh, this book uh, Jeremiah is going to mention, and um, at one point some people seemed to be really interested in it, then suddenly it just kind of disappeared. So he's bringing it back in a very big way, not only the general principles of how the, the turbine works and this hot-cold system and other things he's going to cover, but subtle little nuances that most people are never going to figure out, whether they read a patent, look at the diagrams or whatever, that you just kind of have an intuitive feel that you kind of come across as you're going through these things, and Jeremiah has discovered a lot of these things um, more than anybody I've ever met. Uh, this technology is very profound. It's one of the low-hanging fruits, in my opinion, and is one of the handful of technologies that I would put my mo own money on um, as one of the winners for um, being able to have a, you know, Completely. moving in the direction of a self-sustainable, you know, energy system that's going to produce everything you need. So help me welcome uh, Jeremiah Ferwerda. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Uh, I, I hope everyone can hear me. It sounds like it. Um, let's see if I can figure this thing out. Let's see. Yes, it's working. OK, so I, I guess everybody has already seen the, the first slide, because it's been up here for a little bit now. But yeah, I'm working on the thermal dynamic transformer. And uh, it's, it's uh, the bladeless turbine invented by Nikola Tesla. Um, there's a lot of secrets and there's a lot of things that it can do that people don't really know about. In fact, everyone's being taught that it is just a toy and that it has no practical value whatsoever. Um, and we've completely blown all those assumptions out of the water. They're not, they're not true. Um, and we're proving it. And we have the, we've, we've got the system. Um, with empirical data that proves otherwise. So why use the bladeless turbine and, and the bladeless pump? I'll first talk about the turbine, and that's what we'll be demonstrating out there. And then shortly after, I'm going to, um, I'm going to build a Tesla pump and hook it up with the same system out there that will make the, that same system even more powerful. OK, so I, this, this first slide is to basically simplify the um, the entire system, because once you add all the other components to the system, um, it starts getting complicated. So I'm just going to start with this, just this evaporation and condensation. You're, you've got two tanks. One is your, your cooler tank, and one is your warmer tank. So you've got a, temp pressure, a, te a temperature differential between the tanks. Um, if, you put, if, you fill the if you fill this halfway full of water right there and fill the condenser, halfway full of water. You don't, even, you don't need to fill the condenser halfway full of water, but if, if you have both sides the exact same temperature and you evacuate all the atmospheric pressure out of there so there's no oxygen, nitrogen, or CO2 in your, in your system, the whole system's under vacuum, you create a new atmosphere of just water vapor. So the water will boil up and fill up the empty spaces inside that the air used to take up. So to say we've got this, this tank half full of water and the other tank half full of water and they're both the same temperature, you're not going to get any flow through your, your pipe. So uh, the boiler slash battery is here. We've, we've got about 10, five to 10 gallons of water in there. So we don't have very much water in there. And we did that just so that we could heat it up real quick. Um, and 
We also, we will, tomorrow we'll be filling this thing about three quarters of the way full so that we'll, we can demonstrate it running all day long um, on the heat stored in the tank. Um, and then that will show that it's a battery and we'll have a load running on it and everything. Um, today we're, oh, this is the, this is the condenser right here. This is the cold side. Uh, right now we've got ice, ice inside of the condenser. And of course you, you don't want to heat your condenser up too fast because um, because then, because then you have to have a, have a way to constantly cool it. So the more efficient the turbine is, the slower we're going to heat up our condenser to the point when we get up to 99% efficiency if we can, um, which is very possible. Um, we, we basically would insulate our condenser and it could run and run and run and run on and we wouldn't be heating up the condenser. Um, it would take an extremely long time to, to heat up the condenser and actually end up uh, um, using or and having an issue there. So for now, um, let's let's just do a little bit of an RPM test here, and we can we can hear how quiet it is at what RPM. And then something interesting will happen. You'd expect when I turn off this valve right here that the turbine would start decelerating, um, but it actually keeps accelerating because what little vapor is left inside of this little pipe right here is enough to keep it accelerating and then to run it for a little bit. And, and that kind of shows you how efficient it is because, because just what little gas is in here shouldn't be enough to, to do anything, but it is. So that's the first test that we'll do right, right now. So anything, any number that I call off of here is, needs to be times by 60 and that will give us our RPM. So I'll go ahead and open this up here. Now when I first open it up, it'll be going slower so you won't see much power. There, there won't be much action until the velocity starts to increase, and then you'll hear the, the RPM start to ramp up. 200. Put your microphone up there. Okay, that's 400 hertz. Put your microphone up to it. 500 hertz. Microphone. 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 The turbine. On the turbine. So 500 times 60. Yeah. What's that? 3,000. That was 30,000 30, RPM. Jeremiah, one question. Have you ever run the tank above 212 degrees? Uh, no, I've never run, run it that high. But but this this can take 240 degrees. So if you wanted to, you can produce a 40 uh, PSI temperature differential, which will just make the power of this go up exponentially, the output of, of the turbine.